Driving every corner of our global economy is code. In this series, we look under the hood at today's most dynamic open source software with the people behind it. What is it that we really want to ask of our visual data? Computer vision is trying to take the raw data seeing and turn it into useful perceptions for the computer. Computer vision and machine learning are transforming the way we think about dermatology and skin health. In this episode, we'll go behind the scenes to get a first-hand look at OpenCV and meet its thought leaders, Gary Bradsky and Grace Visum. Then we'll head to New York City to see how Nestle's dermatologists and scientists are changing the face of skin health with the power of data science and computer vision. We'll be able to have cameras that know who you are and track everything. That world has to be built on open source platforms and open data so that we have a level playing field for everyone and everyone knows what's going on. It puts the responsibility on all of us to make better products that are for the good. This is Decoded. Welcome to Palo Alto, the center of it all. This stretch of Northern California is the home of Silicon Valley and an incredible number of startups. From its tree-lined streets to its rows of unassuming garage doors, tech is everywhere. Let's say hello to our next open source duo, Gary and Grace, the leaders of OpenCV. They're gonna tell us more about computer vision and the code behind it. Well, welcome to Palo Alto, John. This is one of Silicon Valley's back alleys. This whole uh, area is full of startups. Like right down here is uh, a food delivery startup. Across the street, uh, the other side is a robotics startup. And right next to it is uh, Array working on you know AI and film production. Very cool. Well, I'm really excited to get to spend some time with you, somebody who's had such an impact in the field of computer vision. It's true. Gary's sort of the godfather of computer vision. He's a legend. I don't know about that, but um, I am a believer in open source. So I've started this open source computer vision library in the computer vision uh, conference CVPR in 1999. And then I've been driving it ever since. And it turns out like a large percentage of the startups around here use it. That's very cool. So how did you get started on the project? So there were a lot of libraries around of various sorts. I thought mostly they were too complex. With that, my interest in vision, I started looking around and I saw that the state of vision was kind of a mess. Every grad student was writing their own code. You couldn't reproduce it. So I thought if I give everybody a common infrastructure, not only will it accelerate the field, but it also help the field by making the science repeatable. So Grace is one of the ones who's helping with this expansion. So my role uh, around Gary is twofold. For OpenCV, I help push for it by involving institutional partners and development. The other thing that we do and I heavily push for is creating opportunities for us to increase the variety of our algorithmic code base in hopes that if we do that, then we also increase usability. What are people doing with it in the university setting and in the student setting? Uh, their PhDs because they can quickly download it, compile it, and start using the building blocks. How about in the commercial space? I understand you're doing some work in the film industry. Yeah, so I'm taking these techniques, AI and computer vision, and applying it to the film industry. I founded uh, Array, which is right next door, to help you know automate production and help aid visual storytelling, make it easier more scalable. Yeah, I think Ethan's expecting us. Why don't we go say hi? Sounds great. Hey, Ethan. Oh, hey, Grace. So what are you focused on here at Array? So we're focused on leveraging computer vision and, and OpenCV to reimagine how films are made. We're giving artists superpowers with machine learning and computer vision. How does OpenCV 
enter into this world of filmmakers. From capturing camera data to doing segmentation, Grace is doing 3D reconstruction, all of it's built on top of you know, the Python and C++ libraries that come with OpenCV. And it just, it basically lets us rapidly get to the point where we're starting to do novel work. Yeah, we use uh, multiple 3D images of multiple cameras that we know are shot at a single time step. And we use the knowledge of those multiple cameras at one time and over time yep. in order to build knowledge. So OpenCV is this open source solution. How do you see the work you're doing at Array being a profitable business built around that? that that's a great question. Our competitive mode is not one application or one function, it's it's the service as a whole, right? It's it's the, the sum of all the parts. Open source is kind of this neutral ground for, for multiple companies to contribute. To collaborate. To, to collaborate. Yeah. And it takes effort, you know, and it takes people willing to basically pour their heart and soul into and, this. And this, cash. And cash. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Can we see how this all comes together and how you make it work? Okay, Grace and I are going to give you a little demo of our real-time calibration validation. Okay. So we have three cameras on uh, a traditional you know, cinema camera platform here. And so Grace is holding a slate and it has some, some 2D barcodes on it. And so what we've done here is uh, we have these three cameras and we're estimating the 3D position of the tag. So, hey Grace, if you'll move it off, off camera a little bit so we see that we can still see the tags even though the main image Wow, that's super cool. So. It knows the 3D geometry from this other work, and so it can project it out even though it's not on film. Yeah, exactly. Well, thanks for showing me this. This was really cool. Um, it's like you're making awesome progress, and cool to see how that's all come together. Oh, it's yeah. very nice to meet you, John. Nice, nice to come by. Good to meet you, John. It's easy to imagine OpenCV being used in the film industry, but what about healthcare? Let's take a trip to the other coast and get a clear picture of how Nestle's dermatologists are changing the face of skincare with OpenCV. New York City, a place that needs little introduction. This city of dreams has long brought together diverse cultures and disciplines to enable innovation. Nestle's Skin Health Shield headquarters is situated in the heart of Manhattan's medical corridor, and it embodies this spirit. We'll sit down with some of the visionaries behind Nestle Shield to see how they're using computer vision to change the way we think about skin health. Hi, John. Hey, Warren. Welcome to SHIELD. Thanks. So what is SHIELD? What do you do here? Well, SHIELD is actually an acronym for Nestle Skin Health Investigation, Education, Longevity Development. We dream things and try to make them into uh, reality. And what's your role in all this? Well, I'm the Senior Medical Director and Head of Medical Innovation here at SHIELD. You know, the old way of doing research, it's really not efficient. It does, it's not very creative. And so what we decided to do, rather than building a traditional R&D type of organization, we decided to break down the walls of traditional R&D. We do work with dermatologists, we work with researchers, clinicians, but also we work with artists, photographers, wow. yes, cool. and, uh, and uh, creative people. So what's it like bringing all these different kinds of people and thought leaders together in one place? Like, What kind of problems do you end up solving together? When you bring people who come from different worlds, like let's say data scientists and dermatologists together to really try to solve the problem of how do you get acne information yep. in the hands of the average consumer, you can think of very creative ways of, of doing this. And we've done that with the app Proactive Me, for example. It's designed to bring um, kind of a, an algorithm of excellence about how perhaps how a dermatologist might think in the hands of people with acne so they can help make decisions for themselves. It's interesting, I brought Gary and Grace. They're come, some of the minds behind OpenCV and I'm sure they're gonna be excited to see how all this data works together. That's really great. I'd like actually to introduce you to Dr. Laurent Chantelat. He is our data scientist and he's worked very closely on the Proactive Me app. Laurent, can you tell us a little bit about the app and how it was put together? What are the pieces? 
So BIAP, in fact, is an acne tracking system that uh, was developed uh, with uh, Microsoft Teams. We uh, used um, uh, a selfie. We use OpenCV uh, to get the right selfie because it has to be the right uh, positioning, the right lighting. And this runs on like an Android device. So it runs on Android at the moment. Yep. Uh, then we had uh, developed a big piece of uh, machine learning, which will analyze the severity of your acne. So right now we're capturing this is what your acne looks like, let's say. But, but here with this app, you can say, well, now these interventions were done and this is the dynamics of like good healing, bad healing, and, and none of this stuff was possible to actually track before. Grace, you do so much work with the, the OpenCV community. Does it kind of surprise you to see OpenCV being used in a, in a situation like this? Well, we see it a lot, used a lot with face tracking, but to use it specifically um, in a product for tracking acne, that's definitely a new one. Are there things about what you did with OpenCV that make it really kind of easy to use in this environment? The original thought was to build a tool that would advance the field so that everybody could like uh, read and run things. And then like the applications continued to surprise me. This is a, this is a new one. Can you kind of give us a little bit more overview on what you did from a data science perspective to make this happen? Uh, so in fact, we had to start with dermatologists, start with images. And then we had uh, our colleagues dermatologists grading them according to the scale, which is one to five. If your five is quite severe, very severe, and if it's one, it's, uh, it's very mild. And we had to have um, a golden set. And uh, we found out that it was a better result if you uh, could uh, split the face in uh, four pieces, the forehead, the two cheeks, and, uh, and the chin. And you need to have pretty good accuracy on what the face is, which you're getting from OpenCV? Of course, that was the key element. Actually, I think it's amazing because the fact that you can actually have this level of expertise in the, it really in the palm of your hands, no matter where you are, it just opens up the possibility of great skincare, um, great skin health to really anybody in the world. And that for me as a dermatologist, that's extremely gratifying. The great things that I see about an app like this uh, given to an everyday person, an everyday user, is that they can kind of see the flow of computer vision, um, AI, and data science being brought into their hands. Maybe they'll be a little bit more curious about the process. Maybe they might even look up the code. And they can understand like the difference between open source code being used to help them and then data privacy to protect them. I'm a big proponent of openness in the AI code base, so people can know what's in there. But at the same time, there's this issue of data privacy, especially in healthcare. So how are you thinking about that for these kinds of apps? Well, we're very careful as to what we're asking and um, very, very cognizant of, of the concern that, that people will have. We shouldn't automatically say, because clinicians collect all this information, we have to do this. And I think just the fact that we've learned that we don't need to collect recognizable, holistic pictures is, is a huge difference. I don't need to know your name. I don't need to know anything about your data. I just need to know certain elements to be able to provide an answer to, a, to an issue. This is why we are here, because we want to raise the, um, raise the appreciation of skin as really the barometer of your overall health and wellness, and it should be utilized more extensively by tech developers, by coders, by, by innovative thinkers in, in Silicon Valley. Think about what is, what is accessible to you and use it, rather than having to figure out how can I get inside to find something. It's right here. Hey, thanks everybody for joining us on this. This was a really great conversation, and it's just amazing to me to see all of these different people all over the world in different communities coming together to make the world better for people. So let's have a look at the app. As you can see, simple app. First thing to do is take a selfie. It, it tracks your, uh, your face and then when it's right, that's it. So the image as it is there will be sent to uh, servers and uh, analyzed. You can see there are six uh, parameters that we measure, which we think are relevant to, uh, to acne. The top two there are uh, two severity index. One is the one, uh, the model that we've created uh, with uh, Microsoft, which is based on uh, a dermatologist assessment. Uh -huh. That's your little derm dermatologist in your pocket there. Then the other uh, four that you see at the bottom there are um, 
oiliness, uh, so redness, uh, hydration. So then once you have your, your numbers, you can see uh, day after day uh, you, the pictures that you've been taking. So this allows you, uh, like uh, I think for the first time, to actually see progress. How can you gamify you know, your improvement? That, that's the idea, really. It's to uh, be able to, uh, to see the progress. And also, you, you can see here on, the, on these two screens, you, you can right. even focus, like just the forehead wave. Maybe that's where you had the lesions. Oh, yeah, you get, it's you kind can of see, incentive. You're getting you see, better. Oh, it's, better. You're getting better. So yes, I'm on the right track. So I saw that you have a social media tab as well. Yeah, the idea is really is could be part of this community. Be able to share your experience, uh, about products or about just your acne in general or ask questions. When you're an acne patient, sometimes you might not want to um, to show to the, talk to the world about, about it, but you might want to talk to people that are in the same situation as you. You might say more to somebody that is similar to you than the doctor, so you might right. even say more. And we know that for acne, typically there's lots of psychology behind, right. so it, it can help to talk with someone that went through the treatment, that went through acne. Augmenting yeah, the yeah, yeah. doctors. No, that's what we have to say. It's uh, augmented uh, the doctor because always you you can have a, a doctor that will be able to uh, to look at the data, to look at what the, 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 the computer is proposing as a recommendation. Let's try it. If it works, we've learned that this new uh, analysis of the data makes sense, in fact. Is that what excites you as a data scientist? Yeah, of course, because now data scientists, we can play a role. I mean, yeah. before we were in the back and nobody sees us. Now, <laughs> now we can say, based on our data, we would recommend you to do this kind of product or not. So we can be part a little bit of the R&D, the, the development of products as well, maybe at some point. <laughs> it was great to have you, Grace and Gary, at the table. I hope we can uh, further discuss some of these techniques that you, sure. you know about. And it's open source, like your yeah, scientists yeah. can contribute back, you know, <laughs> algorithms, the things that help in computer vision. I know. Thank you very much. Let's keep talking. Yes, of <laughs> course. <laughs>
If I open my code and I open my data, you can go test it yourself. What that does is it makes us basically collaborators together. We are moving science forward. We are moving our scope of knowledge about the way things work forward. And you can only do that if I am being fully transparent and so are all the other parties who are participating in this experiment. I'm not afraid of like AI taking over. We're nowhere near that. But I think the core tech needs to be open and understood just because it's so powerful for society. What we've done by putting these platforms together in open source is we've allowed like these very powerful components for you to put together like Lego blocks. Think about how many people you can reach around the world. How can we use their visual data and help augment their lives, help make them make better decisions? And how can we share those decisions and data across multiple people? Because if one person has that problem, likely many people do. My worry for AI is that it doesn't happen fast enough because we have a lot of problems humanity has to solve and we need to be able to scale. It puts the responsibility on all of us to make better products that are for the good.